Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt and it's body armor test day. I wanna get as much of this done as possible because it's starting to get cold outside and I get tired of dragging all this stuff out when there's snow out. So I've, I think I finally learned my lesson. So today I have a plate from Tactical Scorpion Gear. This one has been requested a very lot on my channel. This is their Extreme 3 Plus. This particular model I have is their flat one, so it works out better for me testing. It is four pounds, 15 ounces, so almost five pounds. It's 1.03 inches thick. From our stab test, that's where I take a Stanley knife and try to attempt to find the edge of the plate. It appears that this particular model has full edge to edge strike face. I do not detect any foam drop face protectant on this. Over here on my channel, a lot of my frequent viewers probably get tired of me saying this, but I stick to as many NIJ constants as possible in testing body armor so that you guys have the most transparent as possible results so that if you guys are making buying decisions based on my videos, which you really should use my video plus reports from the manufacturer to help make those buying decisions. I try to stick to a lot of NIJ constants, so I shoot at 45 feet. That is the official NIJ testing distance for rifles. I shoot at zero degrees because that is worst case scenario. Any side oblique or obscure angles only increases that armor's chance of surviving. As mentioned, since this has a ceramic strike face per the NIJ, I've gone ahead and dropped it on its face two times with the test rig I built. We use a Pro Chrono Pal Chrono Digital DLX, so we have that velocity feedback. It's about 60 to 65 degrees outside. As mentioned, I try to be as transparent as possible. Tactical Scorpion Gear sent me that body armor plate for me to destroy with no strings attached. I also use a giant clay briefcase that I've filled with about 85 pounds of Roma Plastilina number one clay donated by Chavant. This acts as a compressible media for us to put the plate up against, and then it doesn't allow any wasted energy to swing the plate around if somebody put it on a steel target. Now the NIJ clay has to be heated to about 95 degrees and you calibrate it with dropping a ball on it. I don't do that out here. So we just get a representation of what back face can be. But since it's cold, if we saw back face of like 55 millimeters, we know in an actual NIJ test that back face would be quite a bit more. Another day, another dollar. Sometimes I record the introductions to these videos all at once. And then depending on when I have time to actually execute them is maybe a different day. It's about 60 degrees outside today. We're going to start with our 5.56 threats against our Tactical Scorpion Gear Extreme Level 3 Plus. So we have our barrage of normal 5.56 threats. We have M193, that is a 55 grain full metal jacket. We have M855, that is the 62 grain SS109. It's got the little steel tip in it. We've got M855A1, that is the Army's new EPR round much larger and harder steel tip versus M855. We have our 22 inch TC compass, so maximum velocity. Someone did say they were gonna send me a 24 inch. That would be really neat. I think we'll take all the shots with our nine and 308 and then go check out the plate since I am losing a little bit of sunlight here, but I wanted to get this done because I'm trying to experiment with heating the clay up while I'm doing other things during the day and seeing if I can keep it warm enough to continue to do body armor testing at least before it snows. We've got our JK Armament rifle kit on the front. So M193 first. This will be the upper left hand corner. I'm going to walk these right in a line right next to each other. And then M855 is next. Now the A1. All right, we had 
Good recorded velocities out of all those. I think our M193 is kind of temperature sensitive because once it gets down about the 60 degrees mark, we are losing velocity on it. That was independence. Now we're going to begin the torture part of our test. We've stepped up to our 308 and we have our standard threats that we're going to shoot at this to see how it does against the 16 inch. And then if it stops those, we'll go up to the 22 inch. We have M80 ball from Poon Sang, just a lead core 150 grain full metal jacket. We have M80A1, that is the Army's current issue ball round, like the M855A1, copper core, large arrowhead tip there. And then we have P80 black tip. Essentially, that is a level four threat. So we'll see how it handles our 16 inch. I'm not sure of the construction of this plate. Maybe it's a tile array plate. I guess we'll find out. Want to load the M80 ball first, M80A1, and then P80 black tip. Got the 16 inch CZ557 Urban Counter Sniper, JK Armament Rifle Kit, Vortex scope up top. So this will be right next to the last M855A1. That was a little on the low, a little on the high side. So here's the M80A1. And that one I shot low. And then the P80 black tip I will put in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, that one I. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. If you guys want me to take more shots on the plate before checking out what we've done to it, although sometimes that may play against us depending on my shot placement. But anyways, M193 number one, two, three, M855 number one, two, three, M855 A1 number one, number two, number three. Now our M80 ball was a little close to there, but that's about two inches. Our M80A1 was over here, and then our P80 black tip was over here. Place those bets in the comments below. I've been heating this clay up all day long. I need to get a probe to see what the core temperature is, so the surface temperature might be pretty warm. Now this is a flat plate, so we're gonna see good representation of back face. Whoa, boys. Oh, raggy, we have a penetration from the M80A1 and the P80 black tip. That guy is just impossible to stop, even from a 16 inch. I mean, that's pretty much a level four threat, unless you've got one that's got those really thick uh, strike faces on them. I do not see a penetration from the M80 ball there. Got a good little dimple. We have some foam on the back, that's a good thing. But interesting, got some giant holes in my clay. I just got this all straightened out and we made a mess. Back face wise on our 5.56 five, threats, nothing to be concerned about. Even on our M80 ball from the 16 inch, very minimal, at least from what we're seeing. Like I said, the clay is kind of, I mean, it's pretty soft because we've got these holes in there. We're losing our sunlight, but we're gonna take four more shots from our 308. This is, again, M80 ball, 150 grain full metal jacket. Poon Sang, PMC. Got the TC Compass with the 22 inch barrel. The, again, the JK Armament rifle kit. So we're gonna see maximum velocity off this guy. Maybe I should get a 24 inch 308 too. It will be interesting to tear this plate down. I have a feeling it's a tile array plate, maybe the hexagons. Just not sure how thick the tiles are. So this one will be in the middle. Poopy velocity. This one will be right next to that guy. Well, maybe. I jerked that one. And then... I'll place this one below the first one. Gosh dang it. 
Did I, uh, hopefully I can get a penetration off that. And the last one, where do we put this guy? How about up top between our 5.56 five, threats, compromised area? Hey, we got good velocity off that guy. All right, let's go see what's left of our plate. Surprisingly, it sounds like there's still quite a bit of this plate left. Shot number one was right here. Shot number two was right there, and I wanted it to be right there. Scope offset is a little off at this close. Shot number three was down there. That's pretty close to the edge. Wouldn't consider that a fair hit on the NIJ, but we're gonna consider it a fair hit. Now our non-fair hit, though, is I think our fourth M80 was right there, and I wanted it right there. Sometimes you get what you get. Don't throw a fit. Place those bets in the comments below as I whip myself the strap. Uh oh, Raggy. As suspected, our M80 ball, there was probably no ceramic right there. So it just plowed right through. But even our edge shot down here stopped it. Now there's a bit of back face deformation and the plate is starting to delaminate. But interesting, the other 308 shot, which was down here, back face is very minimal compared to what we've seen. So they must be using a pretty high quality polyethylene. Now, let's see if I can get a measurement off this. Like I said, it will be skewed a little bit. Make sure we're zeroed. We are not zeroed. Make sure we're zeroed on our depth gauge. Now that's right around 51 millimeters. That would be failing by the NIJ, but that's also a edge hit, you know, within an inch of the edge. So I wouldn't consider that a fair hit, but geez, that's not too terrible. I mean, normally, with some of those edge shots that we've seen before is it takes the entire polyethylene with it and just shoves it in there. This plate did a really good job of controlling that down there at the edge. Now, let's tear this sucker down. All right, everyone, I think this is one of the most impressive plates that I think I've torn apart, and you're gonna see why here in a minute. Now, there are some constructive criticisms that I'll offer along the way. This is our backer. It's a pretty thick foam there. I would like to see them reduce that because it doesn't seem like this foam helps us too much with back face. I would like to see them replace this with more polyethylene. We have a white foam here on the edge to protect the strike face from drops. Now, I thought that this had edge to edge protection, but there is a foam ring. It looks to be about half inch or more on each side. Now this is where it's gonna get cool. This is the front layer. That's our Aramid fiber Kevlar. Not sure which particular brand, but there's quite a few layers of it here. That's all that Aramid fiber. If you noticed when we came down here to look at this plate, there wasn't any ceramic on the table. So fragmentation, people that are concerned with fragmentation and you know, I show worst case scenario because I don't put in a plate here. This particular design is containing those fragments when you take a hit. There's the front most there. There's all of our shots. Now, like I said, I assume correct that we are using those hexagon tiles. You can see quite a few of them there. We measured the thickness at 212 thousandths. I would assume this is silicon carbide based on the price. Here's our foam ring right here on this side. We got a little bit of foam ring up there impressive i like this now the tiles come off this plate rather easily would like to see some more adhesive you can see some there on this as well or maybe take this and put it on the back side of this and encase that in there and then bond that to the polyethylene here's our polyethylene backer I'm not sure if it's pressed or not, but it's rather hard to get apart. You can see that that's still one piece. 
Here's the bottom shot that we pushed in. I'm not even sure that bottom 308 shot. I guess it was on a tile, but maybe just the edge of it, and it still stopped it. I don't know, guys. As a 3-plus plate, this is very impressive. Now, it didn't stop M80A1 from the 16-inch or the P80, but those are pretty advanced threats that you need a level 4 to stop, sometimes even from the 16-inch. Likely, we'd have to go to a thicker ceramic. Well, guys and gals, I, th I think girls watch my videos. I, I would hope they do. I mean, they need body armor, too. I am continually impressed with Tactical Scorpion Gear's offerings. You know, I'm just a small guy and I haven't tested all the different types of body armor in the world, but it has a pretty standard construction set. This is the first time that I've seen a considerable amount of uh, aramid fibers or Kevlar in front of our strike face. Not only does that act as a strike face protectant against our drops, it helps contain those fragments. And then depending on different rounds that are shot at it, that aramid fibers can help slow those projectiles down. These hexagon tiles are great at stopping our 556 threats. I think our limit is our M80 ball or 762 by 39 threats. I think these tiles just aren't large enough to properly allow those cracks to form and to break up those projectiles because we are unable to stop M80A1 or our P80 black tip from the 16 inch. But I think to do that, you're gonna need ceramic that's probably maybe 300,000 thick. Like I mentioned, there are a couple areas I think they could do to improve upon this plate. I think we could reduce the amount of foam in the back and add more layers of polyethylene. Whatever polyethylene they are using, it is seems to be very high quality. We're not seeing that localized back face like we've seen, like we have seen with other plates. I would like to see them extend the strike face as much as possible to the edges. I always recommend a strike face foam, but with the way they've constructed that plate, I don't know if that's necessary. I would like to see them add some kind of better adhesives to keep these tiles onto our backer longer. But overall, I think this is a solid RF2 plate. I think the neighbor is trying to signal for me to get the heck out of here because I can hear him running his farm equipment in the background. I apologize if the microphone picks that up. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible. Number one is my Patreon supporters. Number two is Tactical Scorpion Gear, again, who in full transparency sent me that level three plus extreme for me to destroy with no strings attached. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.